Hello, I'm Mark Mason from Dash Force News, and I am very, very excited. I've got two people with me today, Yuri and Jeff from Dash Nexus. How's it going, guys? Pretty great. Hey, everyone. Great. Yuri here. Excellent. Well, this is kind of a bit unplanned. So um, I actually had a message from Jeff said that he had some really cool work in progress to show me about Dash Nexus. And it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. So I was like, if you've got something to show, let's just show it to everyone. So this is the first time that I will be seeing this as well. So um, guys, just first off, if someone's been like living under a rock and has no idea what Dash Nexus is, in a, in a nutshell, what is Dash Nexus? Um, I can tackle that. So we've been long time Dash community members, uh, master node owners, uh, actively engaging with the community using all the tools that you know we have at our disposal, Dash Central, Dash Boat Tracker. And we found that there is definitely an opportunity to increase the quality of those tools, which we hope will lead to um, a better governance experience and propel the Dash ecosystem forward. So we are building Nexus to give master node owners better tools to giving new proposal owners an easier onboard uh, into the Dash ecosystem to, to help grow. Excellent. So um, Dash Nexus was funded a, a while ago now. So you guys have been working on this for quite some time now. So what are some of the advantages that Dash Nexus is, is going to offer as opposed to the Dash Central platform that the Dash community is familiar with right now? I'll, I'll take this one. Um, so I think a lot of it is going to come down to technical improvements as well as uh, user experience and user interface improvements. Um, <clears throat> we're building a cross-platform progressive web application. That means we're not just delivering a desktop application, but at the end of the day, we're also delivering a mobile application. And I think that's something that a lot of people, even who have read our proposal, maybe don't understand. You know, initially we looked at doing you know a desktop application first um, through the browser, and then down the line using our API delivering a mobile application as well. But then we came across this uh, progressive web app platform, uh, which allows you to target you know every platform with one code base and it allows us to build uh, much more efficiently and quickly and deliver a uh, compelling experience across all platforms. Um, and, I, and I'm really looking forward to sharing uh, the progress we've made there. I'm super excited for this, and I can see your screen already. So yeah. this is so, I mean, I've, I've said this to Jeff a million times, even the first time when the, the, the uh, original Dash Nexus proposal went up, that this is so instrumental to Dash. Essentially, what we're looking here at here is the future of Dash because the governance and the funding is like the beating heart, the lifeblood of Dash. So this is this is absolutely vital. Um, so I believe, just looking at your screen, I'm presuming this first demo is to do with the leaderboard. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to start with uh, the leaderboard and you know talk a little bit about what we have today, as well as um, an upcoming uh, iterative release coming out um, at the end of the week, if not sooner, uh, once we finish final testing. Um, that's going to add a couple more improvements. And then from there, we'll move into the uh, proposal explorer, proposal creator, and proposal detail view, and then eventually finish off with uh, some long-term vision stuff. Excellent. OK, the, the screen is yours. Go away. <laughs> Get us, let's awesome. do this. So uh, the leaderboard was something we decided we could tackle pretty early on um, and start providing uh, users with an improved experience uh, compared to what they're used to today. Uh, right now, you know, you go to Dash Vote Tracker, and it's been instrumental in getting us to where we are now. You know, it shows you um, kind of ranking of how proposals uh, are going to be funded relative to other ones, but it's not the best looking thing, and it's um, missing some clarity around edge cases, which we've managed to address both of those uh, pain points. We released the initial version um, coming up on, I think, three or four weeks ago now, and since then we received a whole bunch of feedback, and we did our best to integrate as much of that feedback into the upcoming release as possible. 
So to highlight a few of those things, uh, right now, you know, in the currently released version, you have the net votes um, in the leftmost column, and it's only net votes. But that doesn't address uh, the fact that not everybody understands, you know, that you need uh, to pass the minimum quorum line of, you know, whatever it is, 483 nodes or so right now. And then anything above that is um, just a margin. And your margin only matters when it comes to ranking at the end of the month and whether there's enough funds to pay you versus the person after you. Uh, so to address that, if we move over to you know, the upcoming version, um, we have this drop down menu here, which lets you change the way in which um, you're looking at these votes. You can change it from the net votes, which is the absolute number of yes minus no's, to the vote margin, which is the difference between the minimum quorum and the number of votes that you have. So in this case, you know, the minimum quorum is zero because we're treating that as um, the thing that we're measuring against. So we're looking at the difference here. So if something's below the minimum quorum, we're showing the difference uh, in terms of negative numbers away from it. And then if we change it to vote margin as percentage, this is another thing that people are used to seeing. Um, you know, we know that the 10% of all masternodes is what we're hoping to achieve in terms of uh, do you get funded or do you not? Um, so anything above that it has the potential to be funded and anything below that has no chance. Excellent. I, would, I, love, I love it. I love the way that you can just look at the leaderboard and it tells you all the information that you can see, how many, how many cycles are going to be funded for, how much has been requested, the available budget. It tells you everything just in a snapshot. Yep. And then one other thing we added is this sticky nav bar. Uh, a lot of community members mentioned that they'd really like to be able to have those um, you know, column headers visible wherever they are on the page. And we couldn't agree more. You know, That's something that for us was always a bit lacking on Dash Vote Tracker. And you know, as we developed this, it gave us an opportunity to try and address that. OK, so what about some upcoming improvements? I think you mentioned something about a voting graph or something. Yep. Um, so down the line, we're planning on making these expandable cards. Uh, so if you tapped on it instead of you know today, where it would take you directly to Dash Central um, as kind of like an interim solution before we have the proposals on Dash Nexus, you know, we wanted this to be usable for you know people in the meantime. Um, but down the road, uh, these cards will expand. And inside of that expanded card, we'll show um, a graph of the votes over time, as well as a focus summary. And we'll also provide a button uh, where if you're a masternode owner and you have your masternode connected to Nexus, you can sign your votes in the browser and broadcast them from there, much in the same way that you could do that today on Dash Central. We think that um, you know providing an opportunity for people to vote from the leaderboard itself will allow them to vote in a place where they can, you know, think about the impact their vote's going to have contextually. OK. Any other kind of improvements uh, that yet to come? There, uh, I think there are two things um, that we we came across while discussing this with uh, some, some beta users um, that we think will be super valuable. They definitely fall outside the scope of the phase one MVP that we're currently working on, but are in our user stories, in our pipeline, and you know, when, when we make it to phase two, we'll, we'll be rolled out, and I think will be incredibly useful. And uh, those two features are, um, one is sandbox mode, which is will eliminate the Excel sheet math, uh, horse trading thing that MNOs engage in right now at the end of the month to figure out uh, you know, what is the perfect combination of, of proposals to fit. And we'll basically give you little check boxes so you'll be able to select as if these proposals are passed and show you what the total tally would be. So you can build your own projections directly in the leaderboard without having you know, to try and copy the information out into an Excel sheet and, and, and doing some funky math. We we had several MNOs approach us about that and say that this is something they use frequently. Would love to see. We have some ideas. We worked on some preliminary designs, but this will be rolling out beyond uh, the initial release. But something that's in our pipeline. And a second feature that is was also demanded is being able to see the snapshot at the moment when the voting locks in. Um, 
almost at the end of every single voting cycle, there's some debate about what actually made it, what didn't make it. Some MNOs uh, have vote late, some MNOs have staggered votes, some of which count, some of which don't. So it would be great to have a definitive snapshot showing, hey, in June or July 2018, these were the, the proposals that passed, this is how many votes they had at the time. Right now, it's only possible to reconstruct that record by looking you know, at the Go object history and seeing what votes were at that particular super block time, but it's a very, very manual process has caused a lot of debate in the community. So we'll basically have an archive of all the previous months as well. So you'll be able to click and reference them super simply. Again, this is something that came to us uh, in our exploration with, with the beta testers and it's going to be a phase two down the road uh, project rather than something that's gonna be rolled out in the initial release. What about in terms of voting? Is there gonna be voting? I, I appreciate this is just a leader board that we're looking at right now but is there going to be the ability to vote like is there going to be voting buttons on this if there's going to be like a summary as well uh, yeah. sorry a focus summary is there going to be the ability to vote as well at this stage yeah Jeff? so we're, we're going to be implementing um a similar voting solution for mass node owners that they um they go through today on dash central um so, you know, you'll associate a master node with your account and prove ownership over that in order to, you know, become a registered MNO and participate in MNO only discussions. Uh, on top of that, you know, if you want to put your voting keys into Dash Nexus, we're following a similar solution that Dash Central employs today, whereby um, those votes are encrypted at rest on our server and in transit. And they're only decrypted in the browser and used to sign uh, your vote where it is then broadcast uh, through our backend to the Dash network. It's a pretty safe system. Um, and I think one of our goals is to uh, release the you know, vote signing code um, to the community. So if anybody wants to audit it and make sure we're not up to any shenanigans there, um, people should be able to take a look and you know, see that we're not. Because it does require a little bit of trust. On platform voting is definitely an MVP feature that will be released. Very good to hear. That's good to know. Yeah, but, but there's already been a lot of work done on it. Yeah, we're going to yeah. need that. Let's be let's be honest. <laughs> okay. Well, um, do you guys have anything more to show? Because I know you've got a lot to show me. Is there anything more on the on the leadership board front that you want to show, or can you can you go and can you go into like the sign in flow um, and just go over how that that will work? Is that going to be any different from? Our experience to Dash Central, or have you guys looked into it? The whole sign-in experience. Yep. So here, I'll bring up the uh, sign-in right now. We can even do the sign-up, um, but the, the emails are a little slow to send. So I'll probably start the sign-up and then just go into the sign-in from my own account. Um, so sign-up. You know, we got username, email address, password. Um, I know some people might be a little hesitant about giving over their email address, but it allows us to kind of close the loop on communication between uh, users, the platform, and other users. Um, you know, we want to do a lot more with notifications to bring people back to the platform and re-engage in the conversation. You know, we want this discussion to be a little more lively. We want people participating. You know, pre-proposals today that happen on the Dash.org forums. Um, we have a notifica notification system there that when somebody adds a new comment, you get told about it. You know That's how you bring people back to a discussion. Without the ability to contact these users, we're kind of you know, stuck without the you know, tools we need to really engage uh, end users. So if we sign up today, uh, was it Stay Dashy? That's you, right, Mark? Yeah, <laughs> you can't take Stay that dashy. name. If you take that username, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> this is on the development environment. You'll have it. You'll have it on the live one. Uh, test, test. All right. well, so, we, could have, we could put in Mark's email and have it sent to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's how we go about creating an account. Um, in order to you know re reduce some modicum of spam, you know we need users to verify their email address and prove that they do in fact own that email. Um, it's not a perfect system, you know, it can still be abused just like anything else, but it cuts down, you know, a small percentage of that. Um, and now uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my account. And let me just copy and paste the password. 
Uh, do I have the password? Um, all right. Well, this is how you'd sign in. I'm going to go back to here. Uh, slash. Um, so yeah, the sign-in works. Um, it actually stores a session token in local storage in your browser and will automatically refresh that token um, when it expires uh, using the service worker. It's pretty neat. So this um, is the landing page you would see as soon as you, the first time you sign in? Yep. Um, once you're signed in, you know, you'll end up on app.nexus.org. And we want a landing page for the website for new users. Um, something that kind of gives them a brief overview of you know what it is they're about to be engaging in if they go to the application. But the primary users for the platform are of course going to be those actually engaging with it. So we don't want it to be too far away from you know the entrance point or the entry point. So how would you label what I'm looking at right now? If we was looking at the the leaderboard before, how would you describe this? We call this the proposal explorer. Okay. Oh, the uh, just to clarify, the proposal explorer uh, includes three or three different views inside of it. It includes the leaderboard view, it includes the grid view, which is the specific screen that Jeff is currently on, as well as the list view, which is more traditional and closer to what we have on Dash Central. Um, and we, ha uh, Jeff, maybe you could walk through the mockups for both, and then show the development progress. Uh, and yep, got a little ahead of ourselves there with the sign-in process. Yep. Uh, ba -ba. just want to make sure we're looking at the right proposal explorer. Um, so this is the, the mock-up for the proposal explorer. Uh, what I was showing you just a moment ago is actually the work in progress um, version of that. So as you can see, you know, this version is slightly more polished. It's still missing what we'd call, you know, the UI design or the visual design. Where, whereby you know we go in and you know add colors, you know maybe round off corners, uh, you know add that last little touch that really makes something you know inviting and you know nice to look at. Uh, right now we're focused primarily on functionality rather than you know beautification. So essentially, people shouldn't get hung up that there's no colors. This is just the just the, yeah. just the, just a mock up purely it's a, it's to show. It's a process. Coming, yeah. <laughs> no, it's Trust great. The process. This this is fantastic. You've got to walk me through. I mean, there's. Obviously, a lot of thought behind the detail here. Just looking at that proposal explorer, just what you had, just what you were showing then. Just like how many, even just on that that grid or tile. Mm. What I'm not sure which term, terminology you prefer, but I'm just going to say tile. There's <laughs> so much information on that. The net votes, the votes needed to pass, the title, who it's by, the number of comments. It essentially tells you everything that you need to know. What's with the star yeah. though? What what does the star represent? Does that mean you can highlight things that you like, or what does what does that represent? Yep. So the the star um, is a, is part of something you know we want to bring uh, to the platform whereby you know a user can you know favorite or like a proposal and you know therefore be notified of any updates about it. Uh, again, this comes back to the idea of engagement and re-engaging users. Um, you don't want just a fire hose of every notification on the platform coming to you. But if there's a proposal you're particularly interested in, especially as an MNO, and you want to follow their progress, you know, especially from the concept stage all the way through to the proposal stage, and then um, you know, in the delivery stage where they're actually working on delivering, you know, their proposal promises, if you will, um, you want to stay in the loop on that. And right now, we don't have any tools that allow people to stay in the loop on that because information is fragmented across all these different platforms. Um, again, this comes back to one of the core things that we're aiming to achieve with Nexus is take all these disparate tools, platforms, uh, locations for information to exist and bring it all together and really get a lot more efficiency out of the system. And as proposal owners and master node owners ourselves, we find ourselves kind of in a unique situation where we see the the field from both sides. Um, you know, even for our own proposal, we find I, I find myself going to uh, Dash Central and refreshing the page just to see when the new comments come up. And sometimes you have to scroll all the way bottom because it can be a reply to a comment that was left a couple of days ago just just to see that something's new. So understanding that pain point and I mean, hey, as a proposal owner, I want to be notified when there's a comment so I could reply in a timely manner instead of you know checking once every 24 hours. Um, 
is 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 a net improvement. And, yeah, I think this is really great. And it's something that I actually hadn't even considered myself. The fact that you can kind of subscribe for updates on a proposal is so well needed because now we're looking at most proposals being multi-month. And sometimes when we see these proposals and they're sitting at the bottom of the list, and once they've been in a month or two, they're posting updates, but most people aren't acknowledging that, actually going and clicking through the proposal and actually seeing those updates. So I think this is actually going to be a, a, it's a simple thing, but incredibly helpful. Um, so um, yeah, let me let me talk a little bit about what we have on this page. Um, you wanted to call them what cards? Yeah, like tiles, yeah. or I guess it's but the we, grid view, right? We, so. we call it the grid view internally, and what we wanted to do is um, you know give people what they're used to. This idea of a list view, you know, it's cl more most closely resembles what you have today on Dash Central. But also, you know, give people a new option for how to look at things with a different degree of information density. You know, at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to stick as much information about these proposals in the smallest space possible, so that we can, you know, provide value with this at a glance look uh, before diving deeper into each proposal. You know, because you want to be able to review these things inside what we call like the global context. So on the grid view, there's essentially three tiers of information that you get. You have the proposal card at a glance. That's what you see on the left and right there. Um, just It'll have the hero image, which is the black space uh, behind. It'll have the net boats, the information in terms of how many boats it needs to pass or whatever critical stuff, um, the category tags, title, you know, all these things. But then to get a little more, you could hover over the tile, and it'll flip showing you the focused summary for the proposal. So not only the title, but actually a few sentences describing what the proposal is about. And not just the net votes, but the vote uh, breakdown between yes, no, and abstain, giving you a little more detail. And you know, if, if this entices your interest and you want to dive deeper, you just click the see more, and then you transition to the proposal detail view, which we'll uh, cover in, uh, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So this is the mock-up. Um, we got one more thing to show here that is not quite as well represented in the work in progress today, and that's the filters. Um, filters are super important. We have none of them today, and we think that they can be super beneficial. Um, so you know, you can sort by categories, you know, integration, marketing, development, other. Um, you can sort by. I should be able to continue. Uh, it, yeah. May yeah, I ask a question about the categories? Mm -hmm. Yep. So we've not seen categories used before in Dash Central. So very, very quick question. Who decides the category? Is that the proposal owner at the time of submitting a proposal? Or is that you allocating which category best it's, fits? It's the proposal owner at time of creation. And the thinking here is, you know, if a proposal owner screws up a little bit and maybe they don't get the category right, there's an opportunity for community members to reply to them in the comments and ask them to change it. And if they do go through and make that change, it will show up in the um, updates for that proposal. Excellent. And one of the so, things here on that filter, which I'm hoping you're going to get to now, is the voting one. Because yep. I use the DMT tool uh, to, to vote with my master node. So yeah, sh show me the options. I'm yeah. curious. So uh, unfortunately, I don't quite know how to get that guy to show up. But the idea is um, you can you know see proposals you've or you, you can hide proposals you've already voted on. You know that's something that I think is super important. Um, yeah. So as you're eliminating proposals, you know you're only looking at ones uh, that you haven't voted on yet. That is exactly exactly what I wanted it for. Ex yeah. And that that's the reason why I prefer using the DMT tool to vote as opposed to Dash Central right now. So that is actually going to be a huge help and, and benefit to me because there's so many proposals coming in and it's so much to read. So just having that ability to remove the ones I've already voted on just makes my life so much easier. I know it's a simple thing, but it really does matter. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so I'm, got, I'm glad we're the, addressing that. You've got the free views. So this oh. is the grid view. You've showed the list view that has the image. What's what's the third one with the crown? This, I don't think this is the leaderboard view. Just oh, that's with the leaderboard. Different oh, icon. okay. Um, right. You know, certain things have changed between you know when we did this mockup and you know where we are now, and it just doesn't really make sense to go back and change things that have already been built. Okay, great. Um, but yeah, enough about this. Let's show off you know the progress on it. 
Um, it works, you know. We can see proposals here. Uh, I posted this one yesterday. Um, it's a little bit of a work in progress, so we won't show that yet. Um, these buttons here, you know, like we talked about earlier, uh, we're doing functionality before we do the visual design. So you can see here this toggle view button will eventually end up looking more like this. Okay. But right now, if I click it, you know, it does what it's supposed to do. These proposals are just missing a focus summary. Um, you can bring up the filters. You know, you can sort by categories uh, or filter by categories. You can, you know, sort by date, uh, price, um, number of votes, comments. Um, you know, most recent, least recent. Change the price. You can see things adjust as they should. So um, just to just to give a little bit of context about our development process, it's it's kind of goes. There's there's several micro teams that that are working on their respective parts. So first comes the UX, or first comes the concept. It's it's us as product owners understanding, taking the time to understand the needs of the community, and define the stories. Define hey, Mark really wants to be able to vote by proposals or see only proposals that he hasn't voted on yet. We define that and, and then just uh, relay that to the designers. In the designers, there's both UX design and UI design. So UX design goes through you know, all of those iterations that you saw earlier and, and we arrive at a layout that works that conveys all of this information both on desktop and on mobile, different screen sizes, um, to, to make sure that you know it's not overwhelming, yet at the same time it has everything that you need. That is a challenge in itself. Can I put you on the spot then? Because you just mentioned mobile. So how fluid is this? Does all the features and functionality work on mobile as well? Uh, yes, yes, except for the proposal creator. Um, the, pro okay. the, 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 the four proposal owners who will, will be creating a proposal we feel like it's a much more involved process where we had to make too many compromises on the mobile experience. If, if you're a proposal owner and you're going to spend the five dash and you're going to put out something compelling to the network, we think you're it's going to do it from a desktop. Yeah. yeah. It's logical, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah. been Even in a mobile first world, it's just not an experience that caters to a mobile device. Do you have a mobile view that you can show off? I can't. Yeah. Or is that asking too much? <laughs> Putting no, you on the spot, we'll, but you know, I've we'll, got to do it. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely get to them. Well, actually, here we can show you this right now. Um, you know, as you can see, uh, transitioning from you know the full full width desktop view to um, a mobile view, seamless. Oh, fantastic! So whether you're using a tablet or a mobile, it just works. It's universal. Yep. Excellent. That's great. Uh, Sorry for putting you on the spot, but no it's good to know that you're this far ahead already, that you've, you've got all the spots covered. And I guess that's the advantage of the development route that, that you've chosen, right? Because you keep saying, like, this is this is a uh, web app based, right? And I'm guessing that's part of the reason why you've you took this approach. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Jeff, Thanks. will you be able to show the progressive web app from your phone, or, or I could just put my phone up kind of in front of the camera? or? What do you think? Um, to show how a progressive web app works. Yuri, if you bring it up on your phone, I can always switch the camera to you, my friend. Uh, okay. <laughs> show uh, and tell. Okay, show and tell. Really put it up like this. Right. Okay. So I'll switch over to you. So this is a cool thing because you've already got an app button there. So yeah. So actually, it's not an app that goes through um, the App Store. You know, it's it's not something that you have to download uh, on iPhone. You would actually just go to your Safari browser, go to um, app.nexus.com uh, or .org, and you would uh, save it to your home screen. And when you do, it uh, turns into an app-looking button. So you could just tap that, and it brings up the mobile leaderboard. Um, and ultimately, when we roll out the other features, it'll bring out the mobile everything. So you know, there's a different layout of information um, on on the mobile view, um, and you know, some of the widgets that we have, we also make them uh, you know expandable in the mobile view. So it's it's a, it's a very different experience to what you see on desktop, 
yet it contains all the same uh, information. And we're doing that for each and every single one of the of the screens and of the elements of the platform. Yeah, and so another thing that uh, Progressive Web Apps really help us deliver is a uh, smooth and interactive experience on mobile and desktop. There's a, a big caching layer that is a pretty important um, component of Progressive Web Apps. You know, uh, the difference between a native application and a web application is generally uh, UI responsiveness. If you can get UI responsiveness down, you know, sub half a second, it stops feeling like a web application and starts feeling like a native application. And right now on iOS, the uh, APIs aren't quite there yet. Um, they're supposed to be improving quite a bit in iOS 12 coming in September. So it should coincide nicely with the release of Nexus. Um, but on Android today, it's even uh, more well support supported than on iOS. Um, and the nice thing about progressive web apps is the term progressive. You know, they degrade gracefully from a client that supports the most features to one that supports the least features. Um, you just lose, um, you know, those those things that make it a progressive web app as you go, but it doesn't break. Okay, I've got a big, big question for you. Mm -hmm. So previously, you mentioned the proposal creator. And although I look through the glasses of a Mastodote owner, one mm -hmm. thing I feel that we haven't done so well in the past, and which I hope that you will succeed in achieving is that new people to Dash submitting proposals, the user experience has to be user-friendly and, and straightforward. Could you please uh, show us the uh, kind of proposal creator process? Sure thing. Um, we put a lot, a lot of time into this. Um, you know, as Yuri said earlier, you know, we're proposal creators and, uh, pro or sorry, proposal owners and master node operators. So, you know, we're looking at this from both sides. We want proposal creators to supply uh, the right information for Masternode operators to effectively evaluate their proposal. But in order to do so, we need to give them the tools and the mechanisms by which they can provide that information. So we to look at uh, both sides. We, we see the proposal creation view you know, as, as beyond just how Dash Central treats it. Um, and taking the entire flow together, because really a proposal isn't born on Dash Central. A proposal is born as a pre-proposal on the Dash.org forums. And for us, we found this disparate There's a disconnect. A proposal on multiple different domains to, to be cumbersome. Um, we ourselves felt like we received far less input on the dash.org forums than we did um, once once the proposal was live, and some of that uh, information we wish we had. So we're actually going to be bringing these uh, experiences together. And a proposal owner will, as, as Jeff's demonstrating on the screen right now, be able to choose whether he wants to create a live proposal or a concept, uh, which is the term that we'll be using for pre-proposals going forward. So a concept, it's shown that it is free. Everybody can join in and do it. And we hope this will bring many new ideas. And by putting it on the same platform, uh, we hope that concepts will get a lot more feedback. So as a result, live proposals will be more relevant, more polished, and really streamline the whole entire process. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's let's jump into the proposal creator. Uh, so at the beginning, right now, you know you're deciding whether you want to create a concept um, where you won't have to pay the fee, and then it will live in the concept section of the proposal explorer. Or if you're you know really convinced that what you're doing is worth it, and you want to go ahead and ask it right away, you know we don't want to get in the way of users doing things the way that they do them today. You know it's not up to us to decide how a user uses the platform especially when we're coming up against the way that they've used it in the past. So we want to try and provide the best of both worlds here. So this is the new pre-proposal, essentially. <laughs> it is. Yeah. We, we also think that changing the term pre-proposal to concepts will help reframe the way in which people think about it. You know, pre-proposal today is essentially checking off a box, waiting a week, and saying you did it before you go live. And that's the way MNOs treat it. That's the way proposal owners treat it. And we think that simply by changing it from you know, a pre-proposal, which is something that precedes a proposal, to a concept, we use a word that is more applicable to the intended usage. Jeff, 
perhaps before we, we go further into the Proposal Explorer, maybe you could um, go back for a second and show where concepts will live on the Proposal Explorer page, just quite how connected they are to, to everything else. Yeah, so back on the Proposal Explorer, um, I think we'll end up moving concepts. But we, we might play with this a little bit. Uh, I think it makes sense to maybe have it a little more chronological, but that's besides the point for now. Um, the main point to be made here is that they are right next to active proposals. You know, we want this to be as um, close together as possible while still, you know, drawing a line in the sand between active proposals and concepts. You know, you don't want people thinking that something in the concept phase is an active proposal and vice versa. But you don't want them so far apart that, you know, people get lost getting from point A to point B. Okay, there's an important distinction to make here. So currently in Dash Central, unless uh, it, it's really mainly for master node owners to comment, um, mm -hmm. are you going to take that approach? But more importantly, even on the concept stage, traditionally in the Dash forums, although not as used as much as we both would like, all of the community can have a say in shaping that concept. Will yeah. all the community be able to to comment, so, or is that going to be restricted to master node owners only? You're actually getting a little bit ahead of us here. Oh, sorry. Uh, I but the quick answer <laughs> is yes, yes, and we have a, a good approach to that. I think that uh, I'll share a little more on when we get to the proposal detail view. Um, jumping back into the proposal creator, um, right now you know we're going to create an active proposal. Um, you could give the proposal a title. Uh, we're restricting it to 60 characters um, because if we let people go on forever with their titles, it makes a mess out of all the nice stuff we're doing with design. And frankly, all it does is really make people write sentences in there like vote for us. That's not what it's for. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, you'll also have the opportunity to adjust your URL slug, you know, much the way you can today on Dash Central. You know, we see some importance to that. That being said, you know, we'll have server-side validation um, that will tell you, you know, whether you can or can't use that slug. Uh, right now, you know, you try and do it, and then Dash Central says you can't do that. Um, but we think we can make that a little more of a simpler experience. Um, then the user will add their proposal tagline, or as we're calling it now, the focus summary. Um, then they'll and add. A just, just to jump in for half a second. So the focus summary um, we feel is a is a very important part um, of the evaluation experience for MNOs. You know, um, some proposals are very long and detailed and and take a considerable amount of time to sit down and read through. But at a glance, you want to have some information about what it entails. And right now, as Jeff mentioned. Proposal owners try to put that information into the title in hopes that that's what gets seen. So while we are limiting the title length to keep them uh, you know, more neat and organized, we will uh, have the focus summary, which as we said before, we'll be showing on the leaderboard, on the grid view when you hover, on the list view, all times. So you'll be able to have a few sentences to explain what your proposal is about without having to make an obscenely long title. Very nice. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And you should be able to summarize a proposal in one or two sentences. In fact, we have the same rule in Dash Force News. If you can't summarize the article in the first paragraph, then you know it's not good enough. So <laughs> You're rambling. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. This is great, uh -huh. guys. It's going to make the um, barrier to entry so much easier. This is something we've been really missing out on. So, and the images as well. Jeff, take it yeah. away. <laughs> so, hero images, um, you know, we need people to give us images to put in those uh, cards and then in the list view and then you know on the proposal detail page. Um, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. If you can uh, make a mental association between a picture and the patterns inside of it and a proposal, you're gonna have a much easier time you know recognizing a proposal you've seen before than just looking at a wall of text. And so that what? is kind of the driving force behind getting pictures on proposals. What happens if someone doesn't use an image? Is there like a default image? Say, for example, on discoverdash.com, if someone submits a list in and they don't use an image, they should. But if they don't, we have like a backup, like generic thing. Yep. Have, so you, you, have you thought of that? or we, we have. So we also give you the option to pick a placeholder image or, you know, pick from something that, you know, represents, you know, the marketing category, the... Um, Geographic or, or category, yeah. Maybe we'll have oh, a library. Some, some decent, 
Yeah, some decent looking options, you know, for people who you know don't have the time or you know funds to go out and take something nice looking. Because um, we ultimately what we don't want to do is build a system that um, you know caters to you know individuals and countries with a uh, heavy focus on uh, graphic design, and you know put uh, you know people from other countries at a disadvantage when you know they just they haven't been. Um, that's the term I'm looking for. Uh, exposed to, you know, yeah. good photography, good good graphic design. You know, we don't want to penalize them for that. Okay. So what's uh, this author thing about this? Now, this is going to get interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so this is actually something that's here in the designs, but won't be in, uh, that may or may not be in the MVP. And that's organizations. Um, you know, organizations are cool because it allows us to uh, set up systems whereby, you know, if I'm, you know, Glenn Austin posting a proposal on behalf, behalf of Dash Core. I'm not posting it as Glenn Austin. I'm posting it as a Dash Core proposal. Uh, or, you know, I'm Baby Giraffe, you know, posting a proposal on behalf of Dash Core. You know, that, that feels wrong. We think we can address that um, by adding organizations while also giving users the option to, you know, post a proposal as themselves, themselves or as an organization. And users can also be a part of multiple organizations. Very nice. That's so great. If you click on that. You know, you could pick from one of these, and then it would, you know, be chosen there. Uh, then you'll select the category, like we talked about before, and then the region you're. Targeting. I'd I'd like to clarify one thing that uh, Jeff Jeff mentioned briefly. Um, organizations is you know something we presented in in our original proposal and our original concept, and something we think will deliver tremendous value, especially as we get larger and larger businesses engaging with the Dash ecosystem and integrating Dash. So we think it'll add a huge level of professionalism. But um, due to the funding situation, you know, we posted our original proposal when Dash was 389 and now it's down to 140. We are being very conscious about our development efforts and uh, being very, very strict with our team in terms of which features are crucial and vital to launch without which the platform will not function and which features are fantastic and really really nice but can be added a month or two after when funding becomes available for their development so right now we're on a very very fine line where organizations is a feature that is incredibly nice and we want to fit it into the mvp as the original plan was but this will only be possible if we receive the necessary funding to continue the operations. Otherwise, we may have to launch without that feature and add it in a future phase when the funding does become available. Yep. Um, continuing onwards here, um, you know, we've got a drop down for users to select the region they're targeting. You know, um, you know, sometimes if I'm an MMO, I want to drill down into you know only seeing proposals for you know maybe my country, maybe Venezuela, you know maybe Africa or Africa's not a country, uh, a country inside of Africa. Yeah. Um, and that that's important. You know, having that regional distinction, I think, will allow us to better allocate funding. Yeah, you got me thinking about UI now. It would be great once they pick the region. Even in like the top left hand corner, you can have the like the little flag as well. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I get carried away, that, but that I, carry that's great. Away. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And then tags. Um, so you know, we are doing a hybrid approach between categories and tags. Uh, you know, categories give us a broad idea of you know what they're doing, and then tags allow users to you know make their um, their project more uh, searchable as well as kind of giving keywords associated with that project. Um, so like say for Nexus, you know, we'd add, make it part of the um, you know, development category, but then also add governance, uh, you know, cross-platform, you know, mobile, desktop uh, application as tags. OK, that makes sense. So it's not just for SEO, it's for practical uses as well. Yep. And then this was it just the setup SEO um, and one thing we uh, I, I don't think we mentioned or made explicit is in that very top header right there you do see a search bar so you will be able to search the Nexus platform past proposals users organizations um, you know uh, as as 
platform develops, we're definitely going to give more attention and love to the search bar. But having the structured data in the form of categories, in the form of tags, will allow a, us to make the search exponentially more powerful. Yep. Excellent. Um, continuing on, uh, we're you know we've we've all had terrible experiences working with the WYSIWYG, uh, what you see is what you get editor in Dash Central. And if you've ever written an article on Medium, you know how great an experience that is. You know, it's simple. It only um, gives you a text box and a cursor. Everything else is kind of extraneous. If you need it, you can use it. Um, and so we wanted to most closely mirror that as possible. Um, this is, again, just in, in, in vision, so I'm going to press I'm going to click here, and then it's going to fill in. But it shows you an idea of you know kind of what our options are going to end up being for uh, you know writing these proposal descriptions. Um, you know you can combine media, images, um, and text all together, uh, and it works actually for both Vimeo links and YouTube links. Um, something that I always found rather annoying. What about limitations? So like we often see on Dash Central that proposal, proposal owners put so much detail in it actually gets <laughs> cut off. I don't think that's something we'll ever run into. OK. Um, I think you know it would behoove proposal owners not to write their magnum opus in here. But <clears throat> I think that's going to be self-regulating. Like if somebody puts up a description that's so long that nobody reads it, the first five comments are going to be, this is way too long. And then I'll address that in the concept stage. And yeah. I think part um, of, of what makes really long proposals challenging on Dash Central today is that out of the length of the proposal, out of its full size, you're trying to pick out a few specific pieces of information. Most often, you're looking for the budget breakdown, or for the timeline, or for the list of deliverables, or you know, for a brief overview. And each of those elements, we are pulling out as separate pieces of structured data. So rather than through you know, 10 paragraphs of text to find the budget, you will have a dedicated budget section. You'll have the focus summary. You're going to have a separate timeline section. That's, that's some of the stuff that Jeff's about to show right now. So proposal owners will actually have to put in less information into the description section. The description is literally going to be a, a story about what the proposal is about versus everything that it entails. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, we think that this description tool is going to make writing uh, good looking and compelling um, descriptions a whole lot easier than what we have today, as well as allowing for you know mixed media um, inside of each proposal description. Um, that's a lot easier to get in there than it is today. Uh, continuing on to the budget. Um, so this is something that, you know, if you were to go ahead and make a proposal today on Dash Central, you would be putting this all in manually into your uh, description, you know, whether it's in some table you copied out of Excel or Google Drive or you linked to it. You know, that is not the best experience, and it's not structured data. Um, and we love structured data because it lets us do fun things with it. Um, for the budgets, you know, our expectation is that users will put um, their budgets into the proposal creator here. But if you're, you know, somebody like Kuva Cash or like a really big project, and you have, you know, your own budget system in Excel sheets, you know, we'd ask that you, we'd like to ask that you still put uh, high-level budget items in here, um, but you also have the ability to attach an additional file with your Excel sheet. Excellent. Or a PDF. This um, looks interesting. Yeah, so we could add a category title, subcategory title. You know, we have cost, quantity, units, subtotals. Um, we know that most people denominate things in dollars, so you get the option to you know put things in in dollars, and then we also show you know what that uh, looks like in Dash. And then at the bottom here, what we do is we're adding things up that you've added into your budget rather than starting with the final number and working backwards from that. That's something we think um, will have a number of effects, um, but most importantly, will push people to be more reasonable and realistic with their budgets as they are forced to define them rather than figure out what they're going to ask in terms of Dash based on what they think they can get. 
and oh, then this, build this a budget that matches this is, that. This is light years ahead of, of what we've had before. And the thing that I really like about that is, is, is it, it standardizes it. It gives it a standardized approach mm -hmm. that everyone's playing on the same level field. So that, for me, is... Yeah, um, the, the really goal good. here is to give um, master node operators something that looks somewhat similar across proposals. So it reduces the cognitive load of evaluating all these different proposals. And the only and it, way to do and that it gets is its to own, standardize. It gets its own section as well, right? Separate to exactly. the description, right? So yeah, this is this is great. Now, this conversion rate thing, you've got to yep. break down this option here, like because this must have taken some thought before, yeah. you know, before deciding on these options. So we, we want to give users the option. Um, and again, not try and decide the way they use the platform, but push them towards the ways that we'd like them to use it. So we have the option to do a spot price, you know, the current price, a uh, 30 day simple moving average, or you can manually input your conversion rate, like assuming you think you know better than the markets and you want the math to look nice, you could, you know, put in your own here. Um, then you, you know, you decide whether it's multi-month uh, and you put in the number of months, it calculates it here and you're ready to move on to the next phase. One quick yeah. question. Mm -hmm. So. If I'm looking at proposals, will I be able to see, as a master owner, what option they selected as a conversion rate? Yes. I will. Yes. Okay, that's good. I just wanted to clarify that. That's it's, really good to know. It's, it's going to be clearly highlighted. And their, their approach will also be standard or, or shown. <laughs> so. Yeah. And then another thing that we, we do need to be careful about addressing is, you know, say I make a concept one month and, you know, the budget is calculated at that price. Um, we will create a feature whereby a user can go in and recalculate the dash total uh, because we know how much things can fluctuate and you don't want to be locked into the price you put in in your concept and then a month later you know dash is up by 50 percent or down by 50 percent now that'd be a lot to move in a month but it's not unheard of and it could really affect uh proposal owners um, so there's there's a couple more things that uh, you know we we came across as as we were showing some of these concepts to to our bid group um, and and discussing with, uh, with with several community members um, as as well as monitoring the Discord conversations that have been happening over the last uh, several weeks and one recurring um, concept that comes up is that. Proposal owners at the time when they're creating their proposal don't always have a clear plan for how to address future volatility. Um, and if they do, they don't always uh, communicate that to the uh, master net owners. So while this is more or less feature long for what we can deliver in the MVP as per our original concept, we are working on some uh, additional iterations and designs um, for phase two, where it, there will be a couple more fields below all of this information. And the fields will prompt the proposal owner to explicitly state their intentions for addressing price volatility. And it really boils down to about three options. And so you're saying, hey, this is the scope, and I'll deliver on the scope for this amount of dash. I assume the risk if it goes down, if it goes up, I reap the rewards of the price gains, or here is my plan for scaling back the scope or increasing the scope. That's something that could easily be done with something like an ad budget, um, like a feedback type thing. They say, hey, I could spend you know, 500K on Google or 300K on Google. You know, that's, that's a pretty flexible cost. Um, or you say, hey, uh, in the event of a downturn, I will be required to come back to the community for supplemental funding. For example, the Nexus project. We don't have another source of revenue from which you know, we, we can complete the development unless you know, we, we get the funds that we originally were asking for. Um, and the reverse of that would be, hey, uh, you know, I intend to come back to the community event of a shortfall could also be I intend to donate my funds to Venezuela or Dash Boost or whichever Dash Corp, whichever organization you know, we see fit in the event of an increase. But simply by prompting the proposal owners to make those actions explicit, we think we'll be able to resolve a lot of the issues that come up several months down the line after a proposal has been funded is and is in the middle of 
development and both the proposal owner and the master node owners become frustrated because there was no clear and agreed upon plan. So this is, this is part of our future thinking and development that, that will be addressed as the Nexus platform continues to evolve. Excellent. I'm loving what I'm seeing. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> awesome. Um, Mark, you got a question there? Or do you mind if I roll? No, on no, please question? proceed. Okay. Um, so lastly, you know, we want to talk about the timeline inside of the proposal creator. Uh, right now, there's no, we got, we have no way to really, to really define this. Um, you know, say, uh, you know, I, I decide to put some idea. Oh, milestones, like set up like 100 wallets, for example, like deliverables, yeah, right? Something yeah. like that. So you, we allow you to define, you know, a start date, an end date. Oh, sorry, sneezed. <clears throat> um, <laughs> add that in. Uh, you know, we can add a couple more. Um, eventually, we'd probably want to transition this more to something like a Gantt chart. But for the sake of the MVP, um, it's a little bit simpler. So we give you the option to define, you know, a start and an end date for things which have, you know, a start and an end. Or if you're running a conference and you know you need five days of prep, and then um, you know one day where you're going to be running the conference, you know, we think we're giving people the best of both worlds here. And not only are these, you know, visual indicators of, you know, when the proposal will be achieving certain milestones, but we'll also be um, notifying proposal owners and asking them to provide an update when these things become due. This is fantastic. Have you spoke to Dashwatch about this? Because this is going to make their life so much easier having deliverables and milestones that they can hold proposal owners accountable to. Yep. I mean, the one thing we're not doing right now is tying budget items to milestones. It's pretty it's just, tough it's the, to do that, though. Yeah, but the project yeah. in general, because I think that's kind of what they do, isn't it? They just make sure that the, the project's being delivered as a whole. Rather we've, than getting... we've been in close communication with uh, Dashwatch, and uh, when we get to the proposal detail view, we'll, we'll talk about um, how, how they fit in, but they're actually going to have a dedicated tab on the Nexus platform to post reports on, on proposals. That's um, good. As long and... as you thought about it, that's what I wanted to hear. Oh, yeah. We're, okay, we're, we, we chat with them all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Um, this is good for me to hear. OK, cool. And one, one thing that's also exciting about the structured data, you know, whether it's presented in something simple like you know, the, the card view with the milestones, or whether we do a fancier UI in the form of a Gantt chart um, in, in, in a future release, a uh, future patch, um, all of this structured data will also be available by our public API. So say there's another community member who wants to take this timing data and create a calendar app. They'll be able to pull this information from Nexus and create this app, and it'll work in live, and the, the, they'll be easily able to tap into to all of this data without you know, having to build their own backend system. Excellent. So what we're looking at now, so this is the kind of the, the last section in the proposal creator. Is that correct? Yes. Um, okay. So what I can show you is actually what's going to This actually just got finished this morning, so I'm glad we got a chance to show this off. Um, the last thing we'll do is give the user a chance to you know, review everything they put together, You know, key components, you know, the title, the requested budget, payment duration, monthly requested, you know, the conversion rate. And remember, this assumes we, we skip the concept phase, and we're submitting directly to the network. Yeah. Um, so that's why you know we're being asked to you know assume responsibilities, the rules, post funding period. You know you said I've read all read all the information above, and then you choose to pay the submission fee. Um, you know one of the things we really hated about using Dash Central um, was that you have to you know go through the proposal creator on there, copy stuff to you know the Dash CLI, paste it in you know, run a full node locally, all these things that feel like jumping through hoops. And what we decided is, you know, really we can do that for the user. You know, if we're getting users to trust the platform in the first place, it makes sense that they could trust us with, you know, five dash for the length of time it requires to submit a proposal, about 20 minutes. You know, I always want to be careful about security, especially when it comes to holding funds, but, you know, we're holding them for, you know, 20 minutes and burning a fee. Uh, essentially. So I feel relatively comfortable um, 
taking this approach and it get, allows us to provide a vastly improved user experience. That looks amazing, but I want to play devil's advocate. Mm -hmm. What happens if someone doesn't pay in that 20 minute time frame? Does everything in that proposal created in the generator just lost completely? Or is it nope. saved on that user profile? It's, it's all saved. And actually, um, we save information every time you continue from one step to the next. But we've all been in that situation where we're using like a big text box and you know you close out of the window, you lose everything. We actually save the proposal detail view to local storage every two seconds. Oh, so great. Yeah. Good luck trying to screw that up. <laughs> you, can sections, you can update whatever you want. Um, it's it's all WYSIWYG. It's all very very intuitive. Um, so, yep. and okay. then when you do submit, you know, assuming we this this may change a little bit between what you're seeing now and you know what it ends up being. But the idea is, you know, we abstract away these complicated steps into a simple you know progress system whereby you know, the first progress uh, component is, well, we got your funds. The next um, you know, is we got to wait however many confirmations before we can send them to the burn address. And then after that, um, we submit your proposal once the number of required block confirmations have happened on the burned funds. I believe it is six confirmations. So we're looking at about a 20 minute total process to go from me sending my funds to the platform to my proposal going live. And when that finishes, you can either keep this page up or um, we can send an email notification or an on-platform notification. And you know, it's a fire and forget system. You know, if you see that the first thing where we accepted your payment worked, you're done. You can walk away and you don't have to come back 20 minutes later, claim your proposal and add in all your information. Because we've Friend had it from the very beginning. <laughs> so that it doesn't look uh, all, all, all blown up. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're right. It actually changes the whole nature of submitting the process because most people just copy and paste that information in, and which is why we see so many errors in the formatting. And I guess those issues are going to be avoided with your text editor, right? Because you've and got that. Actually, I'll, I'll demo the text editor for you so you can see. Uh, let me copy uh, a Google Doc over. You can see just how well it works. Uh, and And the... Proposal creator, everything we're, we've, we've done here, we really put our proposal creator hats on. You know, all of these steps, they will, while much, much more relevant to proposal owners and, and allow for um, many newer members to come in and smoothly engage and begin interacting with, with, with the community, for master node owners, the structured data really makes the evaluation process uh, much easier and you know the API allows for a whole ecosystem of things to appear and be built on top uh, of or, or utilizing uh, this this data yeah so as you can see here what I did is I took this Google Doc here and copy and pasted it right in and the only problem we have is going through and deleting extra white spaces on that you know formatting comes over yeah it's great you'd expect it to and that's pretty nice and so that was that was my test the other day because a lot of us, you know, we work inside of um, Google Docs as we're developing our proposals, and I still think that's fine because it's a collaborative system. But when it comes time to go from that Google Doc to going live, you want the least amount of friction in terms of formatting fixes. And I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Um, so what's that, next? What, cause I, I saw, I can see you've got a storyboard tab open before. <laughs> I just saw that on the document. Is that is that next? Uh, so the storybook, I just brought that up because it um, allows us to look at components uh, or React components without them being uh, inside the broader context of the whole system. Um, so for one of the two things that I can't show you, I wanted to show you how they work inside of the storybook. OK, great. Um, so that, that's think what of this uh, platform as a whole bunch of different Lego pieces that you know get put together individually, and then they come together into one big beautiful platform. So uh, our our work is very much you know broken down into into sprints that focus on each and individual piece and component. Um, and now we're getting to a place where you know all of the base ones are laid out. And we're in the final stretches of where we're 
they're starting to click them together, which will allow for the launch of the MVP and a cohesive experience. Mm -hmm. So to that end, I'll show you a little bit of um, the functioning version of the proposal creator. Um, some of these fields work, some of them don't. Uh, there's a problem with the hero image that I'll, you'll see in a second. But if we want to, for example, show off, you know, dash nexus, uh, governance platform, you can see that it automatically fills out the slug as we go. I can come in and edit it, just make it dash nexus, and boom, we're done. Now, shortly describe your proposal. Uh, replacement for dash central. Proves the user experience for proposal owners and and master node operators and done. And then so, you so in terms of functionality, you guys are pretty much almost there, right? It's just the aesthetics yeah. and dressing things up. Is that correct? Yeah, and so it actually looks like it's fixed. Cool. Uh, so we continue then. Um, we'd select, you know, the category of development. Uh, we'll select global, tags, uh, Nexus, uh, software, governance, and come back up here, hit continue. We're in the, this area. We can add a description. This proposal is awesome. And continue. And this is where we run into the stuff that's not implemented. <laughs> OK, yeah, but that that's great. I mean, we've seen it in, in the mock-ups. If it yeah. represents what's in, in the mock-ups, then it's great. I, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely <laughs> loving what I'm seeing. Good. Yeah, um, Mark, to, to answer your question in terms of where we are in development, our original schedule um, had us launching in the second half of October for, for the MVP. Um, assuming that we can secure the necessary funding to keep uh, our entire dev team uh, on staff as originally planned, we are still on track to hit that deadline. Um, however, if we uh, find ourselves in a situation where we are unable to secure the funding, we will have to take developers off of the project and work with a smaller team, which will extend the length potentially through the end of November or even into December, depending on how many devs we really have to take off. Um, we're Throughout this process, we're going to continue to be engaged with the community, providing regular updates. Um, a, few, a couple of weeks from now, around the middle of September, we will actually have the finalized UI designs as well. So all of the pages will be complete in terms of UX and the you know, colors, spacing, styling will be added as well, so the community will know how it will ultimately look. And we could collect some feedback, maybe make some small some changes as well. Um, and as far as our back end and front end, uh, you know, back end is running a little bit ahead of front end as it should. So a lot of the stuff, for example, for the budget page, um, all the endpoints uh, are already built and tested on the back end whereas the front end is just starting to put them together so that they, they work and are, are clickable, essentially. Um, there may be a point in time before the release of the MVP where we release like a mini clickable prototype or something like that. Um, we'll probably be doing some testing within a small beta group as well to, to uh, get some feedback. Um, and there's definitely a lot of internal quality assurance that takes place both on the strv side as well as on the mine hive side because we want to ensure that when we launch the product it's functionally usable and uh, and it works <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. that it works <laughs> yeah thank you for clarifying that i think that's really important for i mean it's not just mastodon it's going to be watching it's going to be the community and potentially new people to dash as well so those that aren't clued up or, or new to dash uh, Dash Nexus is a project that's been previously funded, but due to the price pullback um, and have a new proposal in this cycle seeking that extra funding so they can continue on doing the amazing, fantastic work that we're seeing before us right now. So um, just just for those that are watching that aren't familiar with the terminology that we might be saying. So great. So that, that was the proposal creator. Mm -hmm. So So are we at the stage now where we look at how the proposal detail view looks? for the spectators. Yes, and so we can actually show off, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get ahead of this, and I'm, 
Well, you know what? I, I'll show the designs first. But the first components of it are finally starting to c come together in the live development server. Um, but I think it's probably better we start with showing uh, what it will look like than rather the half completed version we have today. So um, here it is. Uh, you can see uh, pictures and video will take uh, prominence in the proposal detail view. And you'll be able to see, again, this concept of at a glance information, uh, as well as being able to favorite or see that you have already favorited a proposal. Uh, you can see you know, the amount of Dash requested, uh, how many months they're requesting payment over, um, the net votes, because ultimately that's the most important, as well as how many votes they need to pass, and then the ability to vote for this proposal right here on the proposal where it matters most. And you know, we've got the proposal overview. Again, this is what we were seeing in the proposal creator as the large text box. And we see a combination of titles, text, pictures, and all of that coming together. Um, you know, we also follow the life cycle of proposals from you know, when the concept was created to when the proposal goes live. Um, some of this has been updated a little bit since this page was made. Um, you know, we can also see information on the author or the number of proposals that they've created in the past, um, the category of the proposal, and the region they're targeting. Um, again, information density, super important here. And you know, we're trying to get as much information as possible into uh, the smallest amount of space possible. Without overwhelming the user. Um, Jeff, maybe you could uh, talk briefly about how the navigation bar will function as you're scrolling down the screen where, where it kind of stops. Um, sure thing. So, you know, inside of Envision, you can't really do this, but um, ultimately this bar will stay static along the top of the page. And then you can jump through um, the different parts of it, you know, from overview to budget to timeline to statistics to updates to the discussion board and eventually to the reports tab. Um, but the idea is that, you know, we give you a lot of different things to look at inside this proposal. And we want you, you know, clicking between the different tabs to look at the different components. Again, this is a change in uh, paradigms or a paradigm shift between, you know, the Dash Central today where everything's in a text box and the structured data system of Nexus where things are displayed differently and beautifully um, in a similar way across proposals. And this, yeah, modular, this modular approach also allows us to continue innovating and iterating on the Nexus platform without breaking the entire thing down. So, you know, in phase two, as, as I mentioned, there are some elements that we'll be adding to the budget section. So it's not going to, you know, totally disrupt the proposal view. We're able to take that component and improve upon it. Same we can take the timeline component, again, charts or calendars or whatever, whatever it may be to, to that section. So it can grow and, and improve over time as well. Yeah, this is great. It's clean, it's minimalistic, and more importantly, it's user-friendly. Um, I I know Jeff is, is dying to show us some more, but I've seen that statistics tab, and I'm dying to see what that looks like. <laughs> All right, we'll jump I, ahead. And I love a good chart. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we want to show, um, users essentially you know what the voting impact looks like over time and you know we had this idea to combine uh you know candlestick charts with a line chart so we've got the candlestick chart at the bottom that shows us you know how many yes or no votes came in each day you know yeses go up those go down um and then above that you also have the line chart that shows the aggregate of the impact that those yes and no votes have and then as well as allowing you to look at it over the day the week the month all time or change the dates here with the date picker. And um, this chart is uh, perhaps in, in the exact form or maybe slightly compressed is what's also going to appear on the expanded uh, leaderboard view. So on those expanded cards, when you tap on, you'll be able to see this chart. Um, so that's that's a function uh, that Dash Vote Tracker currently has that many mass node owners said you know they feel is missing from our platform. So we want to uh, make sure that uh, a master node owner 
is able to click and see exactly what the vote dynamics were like, as well as the focus summary directly on the leaderboard without having to go through, you know, the multiple layers and, and diving into the full proposal details. We think, we think it's one of those key elements that should be showcased. Mm -hmm. And then this also gives us a chance to highlight um, one important thing. Uh, if you look up here, you know, we show net votes. Uh, at the end of the day, net votes are what's most important. It's the combined sum of, you know, yes and no votes with abstain votes, you know, not really being important here. But at the same time, you know, if you want to know how many yes, no's and abstains, you come into the statistics tab and you can see all of that information. But outside of, you know, here, this is the number that matters. Yeah, this is day. this is great. It's that as much data in details that you can present is amazing. And you're right that my user experience at the moment, especially look at the, I'd have to have a dash vote tracker up and, and numerous other websites just to be able to get hold of this information. So this having it all in one place, just like the, the concept as well as the uh, proposal creator, all in one location is what we want. We want an all in one solution. And this is what dash nexus is. So this is everything and everything that I wanted to see. Good, good. I think you're going to like the updates tab too. Um, so in the updates tab, uh, you can see, uh, you know, we have a date here for, you know, when the proposal is created, we can also, you know, keep track of any changes that a user makes to their proposal. Um, we're working towards being able to show the diff or the difference between the, um, you know, the old version and the new version, because that's something that's been, you know, very much requested is being able to kind of see like an audit trail of changes made to a proposal. Um, so we want to make sure that we cover that. And it's uh, a technical thing that is being worked on right now. Um, but you can see, you know, there's a timeline view, um, you know, when tasks become overdue, if a proposal owner doesn't mark it as completed, um, gives you the opportunity to add an update as well as sharing some photographs, like say you ran a community meetup or a conference and you want to share, you know, pictures, uh, you do it here instead of coming into Dash Talk and spamming the channel. Um, this is a much better approach, we think. And yeah. I know, uh, you know, I, I keep talking about the future development of Nexus <laughs> while we still have, you know, the, the MVP to deliver. Um, but I just can't help myself. I, I, I get excited about at the prospect of everything else that can be done with it. Um, and, and one thing that we're starting to play around with on a concept level is how to take these updates and make them even more engaging. And what we're thinking about is creating almost like a news feed, um, like somewhat Facebook stylish but where uh, you as a user would log in and you would see all of the updates that are happening when a conference has been held and there's some information to be shared from there, you know, the proposal and the post a video, it would appear on the proposal detail view in the update section, but it would also appear in the newsfeed as a line item. So, you know, if you were away, rather than having to go through and read every single proposal and all the comments on them and go through five Discord channels and figure out what's going on with the community, you'll scroll through the news feed and see, you know, what's happening. What are the new proposals? What are the deliverables? You know, what's, what's this thing that's happening? And again, it comes back to having this as structured data so that we are able to build those components in the future should the community demand them. Nice. Yeah, it's like the world choice that you could do so much. It just even with Discord, I mean, you... There's no limitations to what you can achieve because you you know just Discord you can have a Discord bot its own channel and you can have those updates automatically put in Facebook Twitter but I mean these are just additional things I mean what I'm looking at right now is more than sufficient but yeah the, the extras is always good as well mm -hmm. um, and then lastly let's cover discussions because you had a this good question about that earlier and I think uh, now's the time to answer it. Yeah, this is the most important part for me in terms of the reviewing process because I actually um, gauge how I often feel for sentiment of proposals by the comment section. So the the functionality of this has to be on point. So uh, please tell me more. Yeah, and I'll preface this by saying that there was a small change we made yesterday to upvotes, downvotes, and reporting that hasn't been mirrored yet in this. Um, so don't 
think this is the final version of what you'll see here. Um, but if we click through, uh, you know, one important thing to point out is we have a community discussion board and an M and O and creators only discussion board. Um, you know, we want the best of both worlds here. You know, we think, like you said earlier, there's something lost by cutting the community out of the discussion. But if you're an MNO and you don't want to, you know, interact with people who are not key stakeholders and at the end of the day, whose voice, you know, maybe as loud as they want it to be, but doesn't affect the outcome, you can focus primarily on the discussion between fellow MNOs and the proposal creator. Okay. I so, say, look, we have to, look, we've had some problems in the past and we're going to have to tackle the elephant in the room. So I don't know if Yuri, you, Yuri, you want to tackle this one, but you know, trolls, spam comments, you know, people could just be putting in comments, you know, about anything or plug in like not just spam websites, but just troll comments as well. How are you going to moderate this? Because it's something you're going to have to maintain. So how do you overcome this issue? I, I can start, but I'll, I'll relay part of it over to Jeff. Um, I think, we there's a there's a very fine line between moderation and censorship and we want this to be an open platform and that's part of the reason why we're including a community discussion versus you know restricting it to only mnos we do want those voices heard um our approach is to rely as heavily on code um as we can to to keep the discussion organized so there are some things like profanity filters that that you know will eliminate some of the troll behavior. Um, maybe spam filters where, where somebody's posting too many. Um, there could be some limitations on links uh, uh, off the platform. And the limitations may differ slightly between the community discussion and the MNO discussion. It's likely going to be an iterative process. Um, we have a pretty good framework with which we we hope to launch, but. As you know, as people use it, we may need to make some adjustments as well. Um, but I'll uh, give it over to Jeff to talk about how we want to treat the uploads and reporting and hiding of, of specific comments to to allow for a productive discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I've I've looked at a whole bunch of different options about how uh, different companies approach this uh, around the web. Um, at the end of the day, we want you know moderation decisions to be community driven, and I think Reddit is a good example to look at for that. Um, in order for a post to be hidden, uh, if enough people you know vote it down today, um, it gets hidden. You know, it's still there. I don't want to you know do revisionist history on this. You know, I think some of these comments, you know, if you don't disagree with them, it's still coming from a key stakeholder. It feels wrong to you know get rid of it, but at the same time, you don't want it to be you know, taking up the conversation and being a center of it. So we're working on this concept behind um, basically a, an algorithm whereby uh, the number of reports is relative to the number of people or, or the number of reports on a proposal um, is kind of divided against the number of people that have interacted with the proposal. So if a proposal has, you know, 200 comments on it by 50 people, it's going to take more reports to hide a comment than it will on a proposal that has less people involved in it. Because you kind of want it to scale linearly with the number of people involved, how many it takes to hide something. So you don't just have people brigading you know, comments they don't like. So we kind of have to strike a balance there and you know, kind of fight potential attack vectors as we design it. Makes perfect and, sense. And just to be clear, uh, our, our goal is to make sure that these comments aren't deleted off of the platform, but rather hidden so that they're not uh, getting in the way of productive discussion. But if somebody wants to go and click the you know, view all and see all of them, they will be there uh, and, and, and will be viewable. Uh, yep. And again, this is, this is our hope that this works. If we find out that it doesn't work, we're open to exploring more options. You know, this may not be the be all end all. We hope it is, but we won't know until we try. That's that's what and, we want to hear. As long as you're flexible and you're able to adapt to change, that's that's all we can ask for. So yeah. let's just. It, it looks like you guys have thought this through, and uh, yeah. as you say, it works for Reddit. So let yeah. <laughs> fingers crossed. <And laughs> just to clarify one last thing, you know, you see upvotes and downvotes here. I'd like it to be, and it will end up being more like a. You know, you can upvote something, or recommend the post, or you know, agree, or you report it. 
So I don't like this concept of downvotes because um, I think you know it leads to tactical upvote downvote scenarios where you're trying to move something up above somebody else's. And I don't want that. What I want is people agreeing on things that they agree on or reporting on something they think is a troll. Anything else is not really worth it. But as long as you just don't have like eight different emoji faces from happy to like really angry and upset. <laughs> just to, to, I mean, it could be interesting, but probably not ideal. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's going to be something as simple as a helpful button. Um, this this is an algorithm that Amazon uses for their reviews. Uh, so when you leave an Amazon review, other uh, customers can tag your comment as helpful. And the more helpful votes you get, the further up on the product page that comment is, because that's what's most helpful to other viewers. Um, and a play off of that, what we can do, and we're, we're hoping to expand into as, as the next platform uh, continues to develop, is various badges for users. So I know we have, uh, you know, part of the success of the Dash community is how engaged the masternode owners are, how much time they spend evaluating the proposals and the concepts and giving the feedback. So we want to make sure that those, uh, Individuals are acknowledged for it um, and, and are shown as such. So, you know, maybe somebody who collects 100 helpful badges or 1,000 helpful badges gets a special tag next to their name so as to indicate, you know, their involvement in, in the ecosystem. And it'll help for uh, newcomers to uh, determine who is, uh, you know, a viable source of information versus a troll or, you know, a uh, Soft puppet account, or whatever it means. It's, it's reputation management at the end of the day. Exactly. I, I like that. You can say when you see a comment by a veteran, you know, it, it's even it if you disagree away. with it, you know, it comes from a a, a degree of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we we spent a whole bunch of time there, you know, looking at the mockups. Uh, we've got a little bit of progress done on you know the functional version of this. Can I can um, I just stop here? One sec. Yeah. There was one thing on that page, probably the most. The biggest thing on there is that, no, C translation. Are you uh, telling me that it's going to have translations? Because that is one thing. It, that's an elephant in the room that's been ignored for quite some time. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure if it's going to make it into MVP. Uh, I'd really like to see it here. I think, um, you know, if we do manage to pull it off, it's going to be similar to the way, you know, Facebook and Instagram work today. You know, if a comment is detected as not in your language, um, we you know compare it against uh, the user's preferred language in their profile and give the user the option to translate it using a machine learning system or that a machine translation system. is huge and we've been missing that so badly that is such a key fit i can't believe you wasn't going to mention that that, <laughs> that that honestly that's a game changer for me that's really good I, because i, I do i do want to take an extra minute to talk about language it's something we addressed in in a very long proposal document originally that, uh, a few months ago, but just to refresh in people's minds. The way, one, couldn't agree with you more, Mark, language is extremely important to the Dash platform, Dash ecosystem, because it is a global ecosystem. There's, there's no way of looking around that. You know, our most active component right now is in Venezuela, where the dominant language is Spanish. And you know, we hope to grow far beyond that and, um, as far as you know, the technical implementation of various language features, it, it breaks down into several tiers, right? So the automated translation of comments, which is, uh, again, something that may or may not make it into MVP depending on the funding situation, but something they're pushing for hard and, and should be integratable, um, is, is the translation of comments, you know, just in, in the discussion. Going a step above that is the translation of the entire UI. So if you are you know, a proposal owner, a masternode owner who lives in Latin America, you should be able to view all of the buttons, everything you've seen today in Spanish. So this is something that's uh, going to come in phase two of development. Um, you know, it it's, uh, takes additional work. It's, one of those things that we had to draw the line and say, it's really nice to have, but the platform can go live without. 
So that <laughs> that's that's basically what I had to grab. Okay, so that. comments and an interface is great, but I personally would put more weight on the translation of the actual proposal itself. Is that, that something that's been tackled? And that is the third tier. Um, the proposals themselves are uh, somewhat difficult because you need a greater degree of accuracy in the translation than you do in just the comments because uh, there's you can very easily misrepresent a proposal and inadvertently cause you know somebody to vote not the way that they would have otherwise voted for it. Um, and a simple cop out approach would be say, hey, let's use the same you know translation uh, automatic translation tool that we're doing for the comments on the proposal, but you know that. As I mentioned, that leads to potential errors. Yeah. I mean, so, we could do that and just, you know, give a very big caveat that this is not perfect. Yeah. And maybe yeah. that addresses it. But um, it, it's something we're thinking about for sure. More to, to, to provide a better experience. And it depends where, you know, Dash as an ecosystem will be with funding this because it's, it's uh, a complicated matter. But actually having translators work with proposals or potentially you could see a proposal in English you could click the auto translate button which gives you the machine translation but some proposals that have had human translators look at them do have like a hey verified by human or translated by human badge or something like that and then you'll have multiple layers you could either you know, read it in the original language or in machine translator or human translated version um, so this is something that's outside the scope of, of, of the MVP and probably something outside the scope of our team itself. Um, you know, it, 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 Nexus may have to partner with uh, a Venezuelan community member, a proposal owner, or you know, somebody Spanish speaking who's going to say, hey, I will take on the role of translating all proposals into Spanish. And then on our end, from a technical perspective, we could give them a way to you know, upload those versions. And, mm -hmm. and, and one thing we could do, Mark, is, I mean, we've got, uh, with Cloudflare, we can see what region users are accessing the site from. We could look at um, you know, prioritizing regions which we get the most access from that are not English speaking. You know, at the end of the day, you want to provide value to the places um, that you get the most interactions from first. And I can't. That. I can't begin to tell you how important this is because we can't say that we're a borderless, decentralized governance platform for the world where it's just English. Even in London last year in September, without getting into too much detail, I remember there were some Chinese investors there, and they said they felt excluded. Um, from the Dash system, and that for me is simply not good enough, and it needs addressing. So I'm really pleased and um, encouraged by you taking these steps forward and mm -hmm. looking into this. So yeah, and I'm sure. I mean, if I could vote for you twice, I would do just on that. <laughs> but I've already voted for you. So, but I mean, yep. that that for me is is a big two thumbs up. So uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um. One last thing to look at, like I was saying, uh, we can show off, I think, the proposal how about, I did. How about the mobile version of the proposal detail page? Uh, we can look at that in just a second. Come on. Oh, that's because I have this up. Yeah, here's the proposal we posted earlier. How about that? Excellent. Let's see more. Look at that. It's starting to come together. So the work in progress is almost there. So although it's what, let's just be, so although providing the, the current proposal goes through, it's still about two months, middle of October, right? So, yeah. so yes, well, literally. I, 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 I want to be clear that um, right now, it's, it, it, as you see in our proposal chart, we're roughly 140K underfunded and our current top of proposal is asking for 200 dash out of that, which would, you know, allow us to keep up some momentum now, but we will be coming to the network next month and potentially the one after as well to make sure that we get all of the funding that we originally asked for to deliver on this. Um, and beyond that, if the network is satisfied, we do have plans for uh, further expansion and, and future versions of maintenance and support and ongoing development of the platform. You know, um, one of the things that drew me personally to Dash was having at you know its core uh, at 
in its code the ability to evolve and change. And I have a profound belief that the fastest changing uh, ecosystem is going to be the one that survives and ends up ruling uh, the, the cryptosphere or, or whatever it may be. So I want to make sure that you know, our governance tools and models continue to evolve as the network grows and its needs evolve. Excellent. So what am I, oh, sorry, thank you, Yuri, for that update. I think I'm going to, your middle name's Glenn, I can tell, but that, for, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Um, I think it's really good for you to give, actually give that forward guidance. And um, yeah, I think you should probably propagate that message more to others. I mean, uh, it's very understandable considering the, the current price and the way the markets react at the moment. So yeah, that forward guidance is, is, is good to know. So Jeff, what are we looking at right now? We're looking at the mobile version of the yeah, proposal details. I think it's worth showing uh, it in context on what it will look like on mobile. Um, you know, again, going back to what we said earlier, you know, this is not just a desktop application, but an application that follows you to whatever device you're on and provides a compelling experience when you are there. Um, so you can see, you know, everything adapts nicely to mobile. Um, this will be a sideways scrolling thing. There's only so many ways to do um, a horizontal list. Um, we've tried it out. Uh, it actually still feels pretty good. So I think we're going to be okay there. Um, here you can see everything translates over nicely. Uh, you get the description. And then those cards that we had on the side previously are now at the bottom. Um, again, information density is key here, especially on mobile where we're more constrained. Um, we do our best, but some things do just work better on desktop. Um, there will just always be more scrolling on a mobile device. Excellent. No, this this it looks it looks great. I want it already. I want it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see that discussion translates over nicely to mobile. Um, you know all the different components. Uh, you can reply. You can post it. Um, you can do all sorts of fun things in here. Um, polls is something we're we're thinking about doing, and is probably going to make it in here. It's uh, essentially a poll on your proposal. You know, right now, if you go and make your pre-proposal on the Dash.org forums, um, you get the option to put a poll at the top of your proposal. It gives you a chance to do kind of like a quick straw poll and see what people, you know, think of, you know, change X, Y, or Z. You know, uh, would you like to have Mastodon management included in the platform? You know, yes or no. It allows you to get quick feedback on things without having to go through comments. Um, especially, you know, if I post up a poll, uh, a poll, and we ping everybody who is, um, you know, favoriting our concept or, pre or, or proposal, you know, all of a sudden I'm called back to the platform to interact with it and wow. provide feedback. I can see they're getting used a lot. Should this proposal be escrowed? Should yeah. this proposal have dash exclusivity? That's going to get used a lot. I think that should be. In, is that in the concept option as well? Yeah, it'll be there in both. Um, the discussion. Everything is the same from you know concept through to you know proposal going live. Um, the only things that won't really change as much is budget because you can't really change your budget once you go live. Um, there, there are some things where again I'm beginning to to consider for some future versions uh, in terms of keeping an automatic track of how much a proposal has paid out versus how much it's requested. You know, uh, we put it up uh, in, in the form of a little table on our supplemental funding proposal, but it should really be accessible for master node owners to view all proposals to see, hey, this is overfunded by 30% or underfunded by such and such. And give them much better context without having to do, you know, funny math and calculations and backtracking the price. It's something that could easily be automated and, you know, built into part of the reporting. Um, tab that, that will appear in the future. Excellent. So are we at the stage now where we can start? Because everything we've seen is, is amazing. So unless you have anything else, can we start talking yep. about long term or? One last thing to show. And I know oh. we're going way longer than we intended. It's um, right. we'll, we'll put, we'll put timestamps. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think you'll like this last thing. It's the search feature we talked about. Uh, I think it's really sweet. Um, so I'm looking forward to showing it. And we've also glossed over plenty of mobile stuff, but as you can see just from these thumbnails, you know, every part of the 
project that is visible you know, on desktop also has a mobile component, um, which is also quite nice to use. Yeah, this would be quite uh, interesting because I, I mean, with regards to Dash Central, what I'm used to, I don't even think there is a search function on there. The only time, times I, I use search is in the Dash Vote Tracker when I'm going through that long, long list of mm -hmm. past proposals when I'm just trying to check up on something. But, um, yeah, I, I use a Google search and put in site, you know, colon dash central.org when I need to search it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not great. Um, but what we have here is pretty darn sweet. So, you know, you click the search button and you end up with this, can't click from here, but you'd click it. Um, the bar would expand over to here. And, you know, you could start typing. We type something in, you know, you type mark. Uh, you know, you should come up here as Mark Mason, you know, if your user account was added, um, but you'll see, you know, uh, auto suggest as you type, you know, users, categories, active proposals for marketing. Um, and then you could click further and see, you know, all 212 results. So will users have their own profile? Say, for example, if I clicked on that first user mark there, Mark 20, uh, sorry, Mark 222, would I click yep. on it? Where could I see his like comment history or all that sort of stuff? Or are you trying to keep that stuff private? Proposal history, comment history, um, badges, endorsements, short story about who you are, organizations that you're affiliated with. Um, we see Links Nexus really as a, as a social platform. That's uh, great. More, more than just a place to look at proposals. And, nice. and again, user profiles allow us to build in uh, reputation management. You know, if everything I say on this platform, you know, somebody can go look at it. I want to be less uh, of a mean person, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, this is really good. It, the way I'm thinking about it is um, it, it change where at the moment people can hide behind sort of aliases. Um, this is kind of, I'm thinking of the user profile, kind of like a, a user profile in the forums kind of profile where you can look at a profile, see previous threads, comments, all that sort of stuff, what they've been affiliated with, what proposals. That, that in itself is going to be a very useful tool to have. Exactly. And we think, you know, there's value in being able to show, you know, ancillary relationships between me and a particular proposal, even if I'm not the proposal owner. So, you know, we've got this idea for uh, proposal advisors. Um, it's not in the MVP right now. Uh, it's just a little too much work to, to get it in there and, you know, doesn't provide as much value as some of the other things we're prioritizing above it. Um, but ultimately, you know, say, you know, you had some proposal and I helped you out a bunch on it. Um, you know, I would like to be listed as a proposal advisor and also be able to participate in the, you know, proposal creator M&O discussion. Um, because, you know, those other people involved in the project that may not be, you know, the proposal creator may want to also engage from their own personal account, um, as well as being able to take advantage of the reputation building that comes from that association. No, that's great. I love that, especially when you think about the Venezuela proposals right now where they have huge teams. So yeah, very confusing. Yeah, they'll have a lot of value. Um, mm -hmm. OK, so that's the search tool, which is, yeah. uh, you know, search isn't really the most interesting thing, <laughs> but it is useful and, you know, yeah. it is a helpful thing. So and here we can show it on mobile. As the platform too. grows, it's going to become increasingly more useful, we believe, um, especially think about, as, as you mentioned, you know, active proposals, you have 50, 60, 70 active proposals. But then you click on past proposals and you have 700 past proposals. And you want to find something from that history, it's not going to be easy without search. But, you know, with our Nexus platform, you could click past proposals and say, I want to see all marketing proposals that I voted on from the past. And boom, you know, you have the, however many yeah. you want. Or I want to see all proposals from this user. Go to that user profile and you see everything that they do. Yeah, that's great. I mean, even if someone just said like Dash Core proposals, just click on that, just on the Dash Core um, organization or the, the main submitter, just being able to see all the proposals listed under them is a really big thing because as we were saying earlier, it's just for me, it's control F core and just going through the past <laughs> proposals. And it's it's so archaic. Um, but yeah, such a simple fix as well. So yeah, is is a proposals, really solution. Concepts, past proposals, you know, organizations, anything that's affiliated with the user or the proposal, um, is 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 going to be part of uh, of this functionality. So cool. So that's that's the mobile. So, so it's great. So once again, it's uh, pretty good. So that so this in it that was the the work in progress. So not a prototype, this is the work in progress. So you guys are almost there. So I really hope you guys get the, the support that you need. But for, for me, 
I'm hoping this next part is going to be the even more exciting part for me, which is thinking about the long term and the exciting things. And one of the things on the list that I saw was about the governance dips. Yes. So this yeah. is something that I've been working on a fair amount lately. Um, you know, core is staying away from governance for now and focusing uh, solely on evolution. And I think we can all agree that is the correct uh, course of action. That being said, that doesn't mean that community members can't start thinking about ways in which we can improve it. You know, in Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, they have vibrant developer communities contributing interesting ideas um, and in potential improvements to the platform. You know, why can't we have that in Dash? So I got to thinking, you know, what if I were to propose a governance dip, a Dash improvement proposal that adds additional proposal types, um, which allow us to do more things inside of our governance platform? You know, there are some technical limitations to be overcome. But I'll be releasing at least the ideas behind this, um, you know, either this week or next, uh, in the form of a draft uh, Dash improvement proposal. We're going to look at two particular things. Um, one is a request for proposal flow, whereby uh, master nodes have will be given the ability to prioritize different, um, you know, ideas and projects that they'd like to see completed. Contractors then submit bids against those um, you know, ideas and uh, RFPs, and then the best uh, bid is chosen and selected for funding. You know, it, it increases competition among proposal owners, as well as giving master node operators the uh, ability to you know, get things built that they actually want instead of just whatever people are suggesting. Mm, I look forward to seeing more details on that. So is that something you'll post on in Dash forums? Is that correct? Yeah, I've got to run it by a couple more people. Um, it's on GitHub right now. I might uh, also cross post to the forums, you know, Discord, you know, all the places that uh, people will look at it and then provide feedback. You know, I don't think I nailed it on the first try, but I want you know the community talking about it. And then it even ends with um, uh, you know acceptance criteria, which is in order to implement this, we would obviously need to put it to a community vote um, and get their approval. Uh, before going into any sort of implementation. And this this is not going to be part of Nexus. This is, this is a separate project that will complement yep, Nexus. Exactly. Um, and we are also making sure to architect our system in uh, ways whereby you know, we have the ability to integrate these future ideas. Um, for example, you know, if we go back to uh, the mockups and look at the proposal creator, uh, you can see here where we have active proposals concepts, you know, RFP would just be another option here. And then you'd follow a slightly different flow through the creator as you know, the requested information in order to fulfill an RFP is different than uh, the information required to submit a general funding proposal. And then we also have another idea for another governance proposal type, which is merely a MNO poll. Like say for example, you know, the, there's like two or three proposals up right now that are just asking for, you know, approval or disapproval on a particular uh, decision, and we think we can make that a little better. You know, it doesn't always need to be the five dash governance proposal. Um, we're looking at uh, two options for that one. Um, it could either be, you know, a two dash fee, uh, again less than the five dash. You know, we want to potentially encourage slightly more of these decision making proposals and really take advantage of our governance system. I would also like to make that be, you know, maybe a two week process instead of a full month process. You know, the, the goal here is to make decision making quicker. Um, and it'll also drive more people to, you know, Nexus and to um, voting because it'll increase the, um, what is it, like the, the impetus and um, yeah, almost incentivizes voting it. more frequently. Yeah, because they're part of the process, they're more incentivized to get involved. So uh, yeah, I like that yep. idea. I would, I would almost say this this is a part of a larger conversation, which perhaps we should do in, in a separate call. I can imagine uh, <laughs> you guys watching this after two hours might, might have their... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, and then... Here, or go for it, Mark. No, 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 please finish up. I was going to say, uh, the other long-term thing we're thinking about um, is uh, desktop wallet integration. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on. <laughs> Rewind. Come on, my selector. So a, a desktop 
wallet integration. So hang on. So this is going to be separate from Core's d- desktop wallet, right? Uh, maybe not necessarily separate, but a replacement or improvement to the current wallet. I think we can all look at the QT wallet and say, I think we can do better. Um, part of that is, you know, rewriting it in a more modern framework, you know, something like Node.js and Electron, uh, as well as React. Um, but in Why? doing so... Why do you want to do this? Well, I don't necessarily want to do the whole oh, thing. Oh, okay, okay. So <laughs> what, what, what's the idea? So the desktop wallet integration, is this to integrate Nexus? What, what, I mean, what's the idea yeah. here? So the idea is... Um, you know, as a masternode operator, you spend a little more time uh, closer to your your funds. And at the end of the day, you know, say you want to hold the utmost security around your voting keys, around you know how many masternodes you own. We want to give you the option to do the voting um, from your wallet while also still using Nexus as a platform. So if you're voting from your wallet, you already have all your keys there. Um, we could allow you to sign your votes locally never proved us you have masternodes, but still vote using the platform and still take advantage of all the UI and UX improvements that we've delivered. You know, just off the top of my head, you say in that, I can think of instances where I've been at events or abroad and I personally use the DMT tool to vote, as I've mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. but I've not had my you know, laptop with me with that on, with that setup. So having the ability to vote with my phone, especially when the deadline is pretty close, Yep. is so, actually a very, very useful thing but, to do indeed. But that, that means you need to put your keys on the platform. And even given you know the secure system that we're implementing, there are some users that just won't do that. Um, and we want to be able to you know potentially also support them, which means you know they're going to want to vote from the desktop wallet without ever getting those keys handed over. And this is a way in which we can also get them using the platform. Um, without ever having to, you know, upload their keys. Wow. So I'm, again, catering to different use cases. Once again, it's the all in one solution though. Um, I remember people were excited last year in London when Wirex gave their presentation and they said that in the pipeline that they might have some kind of wallet and maybe in some kind of future far, far down the line, there may be some kind of integrations where you can see the proposals. I mean, for me, ultimately, having a, a one-stop, you know, a one-stop uh, shop solution where, you know, I can have my wallet, but also see proposals and stuff as well, mm-hmm. would be ideal. Um, yeah. And that that's that's the vision that we should be heading for, it in my eyes. possibilities as well, where you can donate towards proposal fees on concepts that you like, you know? Uh, it, it really goes far, far above me. Or you see a proposal that's underfunded and you're able to make donations right then and there. And you can either make them anonymously or publicly or you know, it just shows up, hey, this proposal received a donation from blah, blah, blah. And towards achieving that goal, Mark, um, you know, we also are providing an, an API for any developers to interact with our platform who, who want to do so. Um, you know, that is what makes possible something like a wallet integration or another website, you know, taking the information we provide and integrating it. You know, we don't, we don't want to cut off community projects who rely on governance data today. So as you can see up on my screen right now, you know, we've got this handy dandy, um, you know, developer documentation um, regarding our API. You, know, you could sign up as a user, sign in, uh, refresh tokens. You know, upload files, list proposals, um, submit a setup proposal, or, or set up a proposal, and then um, basically do everything that we do on our platform. Yeah. We provide to developers to do whatever they want with it. Wow, that's great! I need someone to get on that a developer, and make me a plugin I could add to the news website, just, just to show us the data. That'd be great. Um, no, that's fantastic. So, okay, so we really everything <laughs> so i mean that for me is you know quite a bombshell that that's quite major news but th- we have to say this is separate to the you know just like the governance uh, dip this will be separate to the nexus project right this is a added additional thing yeah this this is a long term vision um of what's possible given all the new um you know things we're bringing to the table with nexus wow i mean yeah, dude, this is such a game changer because literally anyone that's got a wallet, well, we know Edge. I mean, I'm quite a big fan of the Edge uh, wallet myself, but, you know, 
this having the API, there's nothing stopping them from integrating this. Now, obviously, I know they've got loads of multi-asset coins, but just having that kind of open source nature where anyone could tap in and use that data is and, great. And that's not to say, you know, it couldn't be done today with the Dash Central API, but I think we just provide so much more information and structured data over ours, as well as providing some nice and beautiful doc developer documentation that the, uh, you know, the possibilities are just much larger. And the barrier to entry is also easier. Yeah, well, gentlemen, this is this has been really great. It's been a very deep dive technological view of what you guys have been doing, and I I do appreciate those been watching. If you made it this far through on your first watch, thank you for sticking with us. But there's just so much to see, and I felt it was really important to do a show and tell. I couldn't just keep all this stuff to myself. You know, if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for you guys. So this is the first time that I'm actually seeing uh, this as well. So um it's been quite an experience but let, let's just bring it back around to the the main reason Let, so this governance is such a key aspect of dash right and i know you guys are both um great ambassadors but you really want to showcase and not just show the the crypto sphere but even the wider audience and demographic to showcase dash as saying like look what dash is doing and we kind of really need this solution to to achieve that would that be fair? So like usability and um, having that right use experience is the only way we can grow Dash. And that's something you're both very passionate about. Yeah, 100%. You know, we look at, you know, evolution. The goal behind it is to, uh, you know, improve the user interface and user experience behind interacting with uh, difficult to use blockchains. You know, we look at doing, we look at ourselves as trying to do the same for governance. Um, you know, we can all agree that the current process is, uh, you know, full of you know, barriers to overcome, um, difficult interaction methods, and, you know, a difficult, um, it's just difficult to use. And if we can address as many of those pain points as possible, you know, we reduce the barrier to entry and bring a whole bunch more people into the governance system. Excellent. And then, again, we build our own positive feedback loops here. Right. So, Yuri... Any final last plugs? <laughs> I think we've covered a lot today. I, I'd just like to thank anybody who, who's taken the time to truly watch this. And uh, if you have any questions, any suggestions, you know, we we want to be as engaged with the community as possible. So please reach out to us. We we'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas for you know either what we're currently building or what what you would like us to see tackle in the future excellent and we're hoping to get this video out to the community as soon as possible we already have jeff and chuck i believe for this friday's and yuri as well okay excellent for this friday's free amigos podcast on the second half as well um that was decided even before we was going to do this video uh this is kind of ninja launched to be this surprise so we're like this i had to get it out which is great so hopefully this will give a chance for some of you in the community to actually watch this video and then on the friday if you tune into the free amigos podcast in the live chat if there's anything that you've seen or you want to know a bit more of as well we've got the live chat there where you can ask some questions and hopefully we can we can address those right there as well um right i would just like to to thank jeff and yuri for joining me today and doing this show and tell for dash nexus thank you very much guys yeah, thanks Bye. for having us. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And for those that want a sneak peek right now, is there anything that they can access online to see like the leadership board or anything? Or is it just Dash Nexus is no go until it launches? Uh, yeah, leader? if you go to dashnexus.org today, it will redirect you to the leaderboard. And you can start playing around with things today and follow along as we continue to push improvements live to the website. Excellent. And for updates so in general, the, uh, leaderboard, the leaderboard is already functioning as a progressive web app. So if you're in an iPhone, go to your Safari browser, dashnexus.org, add it to your home screen. You'll have that icon there. You can tap on it whenever you want. It's mobile ready. Uh, yeah, as, as Jeff mentioned earlier, we're pushing an extra update to it uh, probably tomorrow or on Friday. So you know, it'll be even, look even fresher. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, I do appreciate those that have been watching. It has been a lot of information to digest. They do have a live proposal up now. So if you do want more information about the project itself 
And it, particularly if you are a master owner, please do visit uh, Dash Central, check out that proposal. And if you do have any questions, someone might have already asked it and it might have already been answered already. But yeah, definitely check it out. Um, I'm obviously uh, a keen supporter of this and have been since the original proposal has gone up. So I'm so delighted to see the progress and development at this stage. And we're so close. It's just around the corner. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm, I'm super hyped and, and pumped up for this. So thank you for giving the time for me today. And um, I hope those that have been watching have found this to be informative. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe to the, to the channel. Also as well, in the comments, uh, you can write some questions. Um, if, if you're not in the Dash community, you can still ask questions. And if there is anything in there um, that is of particular interest in direct to Dash Nexus, I can speak to Yuri and Jeff and direct them to the comment section of YouTube. And then hopefully they can address that there as well. But um, thanks, guys, for your time. And um, I see you got, I'll, I'll see you on Friday on the podcast, right? Yes, yep. sir. Looking forward to it. Excellent. Well, there you go, guys. As always, stay positive, stay humble and stay dashy. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Yeah. Thank Bye. you.